Hey guys, Barrett here. Welcome back to another video. Wow. <laughs> the 2021 rules changes were just released. Oh my. We're going to be talking about two big ones right now. So let's get into it. Before we begin, let me know what you guys think about these rules in the comments. Please, please, please tell me what your opinions are. Good, bad, whatever. Let me know what you think. Let's talk about the first one. No more let serves. Yeah, you just heard that right. No more let serves in pickleball. Wow. So <laughs> what that means is that if you serve the ball, it hits the net, it bounces over into your opponent's court, you continue playing the game. Obviously, if it hits the net and falls into the kitchen, that's still a fault. If it lands out, that's still a fault, all that sort of stuff. But there are no more let serves and pickleball. So obviously this is a very controversial change and as they state in this rule change document which is in the description below by the way, they it deserves a large response because it's such a massive change in the game, right? So here was here's what's removed. The definition 3A18 and section 4 service lets have been removed. Starting in 2021 there will be no rules governing service lets. Service lets have been removed. It is noted that out of habit, both referees and players may sometimes habitually call a service let. If any player stops play because of a service let being called, that player team will have committed a fault per rule 7.1. First thing right off the bat here, this is coming from the rules committee and these are their considerations. The first priority is preserving the integrity of the game. Nothing is more important to the committee than that. Second priority number two here, is what is best for the players. Are there rule changes the committee can make to improve their experience, make it easier for players to learn, to play, etc.? Third priority is what's best for officiating. What can the committee do in rule space to make it less likely that players will argue with or get into conflicts with referees? And that's, I think, the big trend and kind of the central theme with these rule changes as a lot of it has to do with the slippery slopes and the interpretations and the gray areas, right? The less likely that gray areas are to come up, the less likely you're going to have arguments and escalations and so on. So I'm gonna read off the couple of paragraphs here uh, where they talked about preserving the integrity of the game. If there is a rule in the game that can invite active or passive cheating at worst or prevent inaccurate calls at best, Shouldn't every player expect the rules committee to address it for the good of the game? Can you think of anything that would damage the integrity of the game more than active or passive cheating? The rules committee cannot and will not let the game everyone enjoys be damaged by even a very small number of players who might usurp a rule to their advantage now or in the future. The future is admittedly more important in this change than the present case, and I'm glad to hear that right? We don't want to be reactionary. We need to be proactive. That is perhaps why many may have a hard time initially understanding why this change has been enacted. The let serve rule opens up a loophole for inaccurate, intentional or otherwise, calls. The rules committee is closing it. Consider this scenario. You are in the winner's bracket, three wins away from the mixed gold medal match where a golden ticket to nationals awaits the winning team. So you're playing at some kind of... Um, you know, qualifying tournament. The match does not yet qualify for a referee. There is an MMP national qualifier event at the 3-5 level. You are serving for match point up 10-9 in game three. You serve wide and catch the receiver leaning the wrong way. He hits his return of your serve wide and erroneously and immediately yells, let. You know there was no let serve, but there's nothing you can do about it. In the 2020 rulebook, you must play a replay. It does no good to appeal to the head referee or tournament director because it's a judgment call. You have just lost your match point serve to someone who has made a horrible call and you know it. Okay, I won't read the rest of it, but this is the reason why they're, get ridding, they're getting rid of let serves is because it's an easy way, it's an easy loophole basically to cheat your way out of a serve that you didn't like. So the, the first question to ask here is, how often does this happen? Personally, I have never seen cheating 
and pickleball before, but again, that's that's a reactionary statement for me, right? They're trying to be proactive, and I think that's really the important thing to understand here when we look at these two major rules changes is what, how is this going to affect the future? If they do think that pickleball is going to explode out in, into the stratosphere in terms of popularity, which may or may not happen, I mean, let's, let's be frank here, that may not happen, then they need to be very careful about these rules going forward. And if pickleball does become more popular, you're going to have more competition and you're going to have more incentives. And when you have more incentives, you're, you're more likely to have people who are going to cheat because they have the incentive to do so. So when it comes to these let serves, it's very easy, especially with those indoor nets, to, you know, just barely graze the ball. And, you know, you can hardly even tell that it even happened. The thing is, though, it doesn't happen very often. And on outdoor nets, especially ones that are new and the, the, the net band is very tight, you know, if it even grazes that net, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pop up and it becomes very obvious. However, what they're pointing to here is that if you call let, you have no recourse. You can't say, well, no, no, let's go check the video or let's check the little fancy, you know, tennis beeping thing that you hear in the, in the big tennis tournaments. You have no way of being able to fight back against the call that you knew was false. And that loophole does exist, and they're closing it. How is this going to affect your game? Well, first of all, you can never scoot forward expecting a let, a let ball, or sorry, uh, a ball that hits the net, right? That's just not going to happen. You're going to have to be a little bit more aware when you're returning. I mean, if that ball is com coming in low in any way, if you know the person is a power server, it's more likely to hit the net. You're going to have to be a little bit more aware with the serve. In singles, though, it's kind of bad. I mean, if you serve the ball, it hits the net, and it pops up nicely near the center line, you pretty much just lost the point. How is this going to affect play also, like, strategically? You're going to want to stay away from getting anywhere near that net, especially if you're going up going up against tennis players. You know, a tennis player loves balls that go high and they bounce high. They, they just, they're going to brush up on that thing and then you're going to be less likely to make a good third. So this is such a, a rare case though. Let serves just don't happen very often. So overall, you're probably not going to notice much difference going forward, but it is a pretty big deal and, and really, it sets a precedent. It really does with the rules committee because they're willing to get rid of something that's been a staple of not only pickleball, but of just racket sports in general. Like most people know what let means, right? Regardless of whether you play racket sports or not. And the fact that they're willing to go out on a limb, well, maybe not a limb, but to really kind of be brave about that, have some courage about this is actually pretty cool. And I admire that kind of courage. The big downside to this new rule about no more let serves is that now scoring a point could potentially be completely out of your control. If you are mobility limited, if you're not the kind of person that can run up to the, to the net, to, to the kitchen line, when a serve hits the net and it just barely comes over the net, you're in a extreme disadvantage and that can feel pretty bad. So... Again, that's not going to happen very often, but it's going to create a situation that if the ball does hit the net and it just barely lands past the kitchen line, the point is good and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Your partner can't scoot over to get it, so what do you do? Absolutely nothing. They just scored a point and then it's like, well, there was nothing that I could do. Okay, number two, <laughs> and this is, wow, this is crazy. We can now do drop serves in pickleball. We can now drop the ball, let it bounce, and then smack it over the net on the serve. So here, let me just give you the, the general, the kind of the gist here. This is not necessarily a rules change, something they're adding as a provisional rule. Now, provisional rule doesn't really mean anything. They're just trying to let people know, hey, we're going to kind of watch this over 2021. We'll see how this functions. 
and then in 2022 we may remove it or change it or whatever. But what what this is is you can drop the ball, right? Let it bounce and then serve it, okay? But whether it's above your navel, whether your the ball is above your wrist, whether you do an upward motion or not, no longer matters. The only thing that matters is how you drop the ball and where you're standing. The, the baseline, sideline, centerline stuff still counts. As far as I know, that's what this rule means. You can, you can drop the ball and then hack down on it like that. Whereas previously that was extremely illegal. Keep in mind though that this is an optional serve. You can do this serve if you wish to do so. The old serve is not going away. You don't have to replace it, but you can drop serve one point and then do the regular serve the next point. The choice is totally up to you. Now, that seems pretty crazy to you, right? People are gonna be dropping the ball and then, and then doing all this sort of weird, crazy backspin stuff. But the more I looked into this and the more I thought about it, it actually makes a lot of logical sense. And again, let me know what you think down in the comments. There are a lot of problems with the serve in pickleball. One of the biggest problems is that in order to make the game palatable, basically, the serve has to be easy to get. I had a listener email me a couple of months ago with an email, it was quite brilliant. And he told me, he was like, you know, in tennis, you don't really play tennis matches very often. And the reason is, is because the, ten the serve is very difficult to do. So when most people go play tennis, they just kind of go out and they hit the ball back and forth, back and forth. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. I'm not, I'm not a tennis player, so I've never known that. But pickleball is different. Because the serve is so easy to get in pickleball, right? It makes it much more likely that people are going to play full games and have the maximum amount of fun possible. Also makes it to where being competitive is a bit more easy. It's a lot more easy to get into in general. The problem though with making the serve so easy to get is that you have to have a lot of rules that control that aspect of the game. And therein lies the issue. Because there are so many rules that affect how you can serve, they're extremely difficult to enforce. As an example, you can't hit the, you can't hit the ball above your, your navel, above your belly button. Well, how do you enforce that? How do you know where someone, someone's belly button is? How do you really know if the ball was just barely above your wrist? What is your wrist? <laughs> is it the very top? Is it the middle? You know, it's very hard to see. The, the paddle is swinging so quickly. There are a lot of issues that make the serve very difficult to enforce, yet it's still important because it makes the game easy to play. You see how this is working. This is why they're trying to drop serve in 2021. It's to make it much easier for officials to enforce serving rules, but it also still, in the same vein, makes it easier for beginners to get the ball and to also serve the ball. By the way, being an instructor, I've taught many people how to serve and it, this is very difficult for people sometimes. And so now you have a constant and the constant is physics. Now, instead of us dropping the ball ourselves, now we're going to let physics do it. Now, of course, the, the common response to this is, well, what if you have a seven foot guy, you know, seven foot guy and you have a five foot guy, right? And they both drop the ball. Obviously, there's going to be a little bit of a difference there, but I don't think it's going to be that extreme. So again, let me know what you guys think about these rules. I went out and tried this. I'll show you some of the footage here. The ball bounces very, very low. And I could tell by doing this, I was definitely able to get just a little bit more power because if I kind of like stretch it out in front of me as far as I can and then give myself a little bit of a kind of a running start, almost like a happy Gilmore kind of thing, I was really able to smack some balls over the net. I can't really tell if it's any different than the, the, the sort of power serve that I do now, but I certainly did notice a difference. But this is going to make it much easier for officials to judge whether you're breaking the rules or not. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. It also makes it to where, again, there's none of these like weird gray areas or loopholes or anything like that. One of the downsides, of course, to, to drop serves is first of all, it looks ridiculous. I can 
pretty much say for certain that in order to get the most powerful drop serve possible, you're going to be stand, you're going to have your feet as far away from your arm as possible, and you're going to drop and then you're going to try to scoot up to get your momentum going forward. I'm going to do a video about drop serves probably in a couple weeks to talk about some advantages that you could have with this serve, but it looks absolutely ludicrous. The other thing, of course, is that there's no upward arc thing. There's no, there's no, you know, wrist requirements or anything. So the level of like trick serves or tricky stuff that you can do, is going to be increased dramatically because there's no rules that, are, that will be affecting it. So we're going to see a lot more topspin most likely on some of these serves, but we'll counter it, right? We will learn over time. We'll get used to all of these new things and we'll be fine in the long run. So what do you guys think about these new rules? I mean, I'm excited to see what people think about them. I think it's very interesting. I think logically, they certainly make sense. And from a, an integrity perspective, and from a kind of a rules perspective, these rules make perfect sense. But what are going to be the unintended consequences? That was the, that, that's the problem that the serve has run into, yes. Via the rules, we've been able to control the serve to make it easier for people to get, of course, but the unintended consequences are that they're in nearly impossible to enforce. Let me know what you guys think about these rules. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.